This is the Juring M3, and this is Juring's new release, M2S. Now, by the time you see this, I'm not sure if it's available in your country, but I've had this for a couple of days now. Um, just really got the hang of it, and I thought I'd share it with you as soon as I can. And like I said, if you want to see more early releases of products, especially tech from China, feel free to subscribe. So I want to go through the basics, the exterior, the actual functionalities, how the actual gimbal performs, as well as some real life tests. So we can compare these two gimbals and help you decide which one is good for you. Now, what you get in the package quickly, just to show you, both come with this white backpack. Um, this, you only get it if you purchase the Pro Combo, which is a little bit more expensive. This one is standard, so you get this regardless of the basic package. We've got all the cables, as well as a phone holder, and of course, you've got the straps for your backpack. Now, what you do get extra if you purchase the Pro Combo is, apart from the backpack, you also get one of these. This is a extension for a microphone. You also get a shotgun mic as well, so if you haven't seen that video, go check it out, my M3 full review. Uh, but today, it's just a comparison and more on the M2S. Now in terms of size, you can see this is slightly taller. Now that's not because the gimbal is taller, it's because we have a longer, higher tripod leg. Whereas the M2S only comes with the smaller, cheaper version, uh, more plasticky tripod leg. So if we take that apart, if we just measure the base itself, the handlebars, it's actually identical in terms of height. And in terms of the tallest, compact size, pretty much the same, that's why they share the same backpack. Now, there is something different, is the length of the gimbal arms. If you look at across, we do have a slightly, let me lock this, we do have a slightly longer arm on the M3. Now that gives a little bit of extra space for your mirrorless cameras, whereas this one is a very tight fit. And I mean very tight. Sometimes being tight is not a good thing, especially when it comes to gimbals, all right? Ergonomically and cosmetically, of course, the M3 wins here, hands down. You've got a better construction. This is more of a solid composite, whereas this is, I think it's just plastic, all right? This is plastic build, so you can feel that it's not as uh, luxurious. And in terms of feel, this is actually a rubber protruding group, whereas this one is, it feels like it's just a stick on uh, with a pattern attached to it. Both have these clicky buttons, whereas the M3, we have a focus wheel attached to the front as well, where this does not. Looking from the side, very similar. On the top, we have a quarter inch mount on both of these. Uh, on the bottom, uh, on the M3, we have a adjuster for the front lights. So what are these selfie lights? Uh, we have this as well on this side. That's the selfie light adjust to adjust the brightness. We've got a PD charger on this side. It's on the other side on the M3. Uh, this is around two hours. This is around 1.5 hours. So this is slightly quicker apparently, uh, but I couldn't tell the difference anyways. Uh, in terms of usage, both last around eight to 10 hours. With these gimbals these days, they're pretty good on a daily basis. Okay, so you probably should get away with it with one single charge. Looking at the front, similar, we have the record button as well as the mode function button as well as a joystick. Now both of these come with a type C so you can connect to your camera and then using the record button to activate that. Screen wise, M3 is bigger so you get a better visibility uh, versus a small screen on the M2S. Joystick wise, well this one is a little bit more gimbal, you know, it's got a little bit more angle and flex, whereas this one is, you're kind of just, you know, turning it like the old style. Now we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's see how well they perform with an actual camera. Straight off the bat, I'm going to tell you both of these are not aimed at professionals, okay? The M3 is aimed at everyday users, vloggers, cameras, semi-professionals, and by semi, I meant, uh, you know, you don't do a lot of production work, camera work, now, you don't have a heavy zoom lens on a mirrorless camera, so that's probably a no-go for either of these. But if you're a first-timer, just getting to the film game, you've got one of these you know, little cameras, you've got a mobile phone, and you also have a mirrorless as well, with a fairly light lens, this is probably a good to go for both of these, okay? But there are limitations, and it is different, so let me get through with you. Now, to put the cameras on, they use the same quick release uh, plate underneath, okay? It's one size fits all, but you cannot adjust your battery while that's attached, so you need to remove this to get your batteries out. Putting it on, super simple, so just click and slide, and it locks in, right? So I have that for both of these, let me just try this, okay, done. Because this have a smaller arm length, you're gonna have trouble adjusting a bigger camera, especially with a long lens. It's gonna hit your EVF. And this sometimes happens with the M3 as well, if you see my previous videos, uh, but most of the time, you get a pretty good clearance on this. At least you can just scrape through. Whereas on the M2S, you are going to hit. So you could lower the camera a little bit, 
and then I would fit just kind of okay. You know, I'm already touching the rubber pieces, so you need to remove that, uh, but you are adjusting the mobility. And because you're kind of stuck here, you're having trouble balancing your camera. How does it perform on this? Let me show you. Without being perfectly balanced, okay, now it's on. And it's, so if you're doing like everyday shooting with this, you can probably get away with it. But like I said, look, you can't get any lower than that, right? You're kind of stuck at this angle. That being said, if you go over exerting forces on a gimbal like this, this size, um, with a camera setup like this, let's go to go mode, right? Which is like the super sensitive mode, right? You move around, okay, left and right pan, it's okay, right? Now, if we look up and down, okay, you're hitting your camera on the axis. And another thing to notice is as I'm kind of porting down, the gimbal dies. But as you kind of come back up, you double tap, you're good to go again. So you can continue shooting without resetting your gimbal. So that's one of the improvements they've made. Uh, so, you know, with the algorithm, but you know, you're gonna have moving mobility issues if you wanna do a full range of movement. Whereas on the M3, you feel a lot more confident. But like I said, if you're using a big lens like this one, I had to adjust the angles just a little bit. You are still gonna hit the ABF, right? Now that being said, if you're having size issues, you can try one of these. This is a Durang Universal mount adapter. See that? I wish everything is that easy. All you gotta do is undo this screw here. There's a screw right here on the plate. Once you do that, you can replace the old shorter mounting plate with this Universal plate. Now, this actually works on both the M2S as well as the M3. This is the old piece. Okay, and this is the newer, longer piece. Okay, and it comes with one of these quick release plates as well. So you can just put this underneath your camera, one of these things, slide it on, and you're good to go. Now keep in mind, even though you have a longer base, if it's a bigger camera, uh, still not 100% all the lenses and cameras are available for this gimbal. So definitely go to the website and check on the list of compatible cameras and lenses combos, just to make sure. But from my knowledge, all the combat cameras, like the G7X, the Sony ZV-E, the Sony uh, A6000 series, uh, shouldn't have a problem fitting on one of these. Now, speaking of this, let's try this on. It's not 100% stabilized right now. I'm just gonna turn it on just to see because I'm too lazy and I wanna test out the gimbal for you as well. But don't do this on your machine, okay? So it's not good for the actual motors. But as you can see, I would assume you have no problem because, you know, uh, Jiren's gimbals are actually pretty good since, you know, this year uh, with the release of the M3. Uh, but look, I don't expect any problems with this. Let's go to uh, POV mode so that I can flip it around. All right? I'm actually just throwing this around, you know, you being naughty, you naughty, you naughty. No, look, it's just, you know, it's such a rebellious little teenager. Uh, but, you know, it does what it's told when it wants to. And apart from that, you know, it keeps in line and it's very, very good. Lock mode, right, let's have a look. I'm gonna see how much angle I can get on this baby. So from this angle here, and uh, you're going all the way around to here. Okay, so so nearly a 360, but it's probably, no, it's probably not, 270. Right, I'm being exaggerating. It's 270 is, is all you're getting, uh, but that's what you're getting on a lock mode, okay? And on a go mode, which is like the most sensitive mode, you have to hold the trigger, and we're in go mode, right? So it's pretty good, right? I'm gonna flip it around, if I can still hold on to it, yep, here we go. And it does what it's told, so that is pretty good. You can quickly switch your cameras around, Take this off, just like that, and put this on. And you're good to go. No balance whatsoever, whatever is, turn it on. And there you go, right? Once again, don't do this with your gimbals. I'm just testing it out. This is not a heavy camera, uh, by all means, so it shouldn't have that much of stress on the gimbals, motors, uh, but look, it does fine. Right, so, so if you're using a camera, if you're using your phone all the time, um, you know, I think you've got a pretty good gimbal, everyday gimbal, uh, compact, carry around, uh, you've got everything, you know, it's good to go. I'm just throwing it around like this. Okay, did I just lose it? No, it's back, there you go, see? 
the recovery on one of these gimbals is actually pretty good. You know, whereas the old model, you have to reset, turn it off and turn it back on. Okay, so let's go outside, do a real test. I'm gonna turn off the in-body stabilization. I'm gonna use two different focal lengths, 24 and 75. Uh, a 75 just to really uh, show you what the vibration might look like uh, at a pretty excessive level. And I'm gonna do both walking and running for both of these setups, so let's go. And finally, recommendation and what I think this is actually catered for. You've got two different gimbals at very different price ranges. Um, personally, straight off the bat, if I was a daily user, a new user to the gimbal, uh, a phone user, or someone who uses a compact camera uh, on a daily basis or often, I would definitely choose this one over the M2, right? You're saving a lot of money and the capabilities, the functionality is very similar. For the extra price, you get a better looking, better built, uh, gimbal, so it's going to last you longer, uh, but keep that in mind, you know, gimbal kind of get updated very regularly, you know, once a year you get a new gimbal, so, you know, you, you use this for two years, I think no problems, and you probably upgrade to something more professional for a mirrorless camera, because I would assume you would upgrade your camera eventually. And if you are a mirrorless camera user, I would probably not even use any of these gimbals. I would probably recommend a Weeble 2 because it just will last you longer and if you upgrade your lens you don't have to upgrade your gimbal because the clearance is just not so good with these two but for me personally this is the one i prefer feel free to share it with someone who's about to buy a gimbal and maybe save them a couple bucks and if you want to see new tech pre-release tech especially ones coming from china feel free to subscribe peace